We're also given a the first try of recording this. They missed our truck stop shirts. One more. Wait, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate a truck stop. We need it in the recording. Represent. Yeah. And Is it time? He has a fruit turban on. Yeah, we 22. have 23 people. We're going to give one more minute. We got a lot of people that know about the truck stop. Really? <laughs> I had dinner there. Last Nancy night. is not seeing us. Is anyone else having issues not seeing us? Um, let me see. Nancy Gallagher? Yes. Hi, Nancy. She can't see you. You can't okay. see me. Um, what should she do? Um, is there anybody else not seeing us? No. Amy in Omaha, you see us? Hillary sees us. Everyone else sees us. It might be something on your end. Um, I'd say mess with it for a few minutes, and if it doesn't work, we'll get you a recording. Or a private one. Or you can take the next one. Yeah. Make sure that it just shows that you, on the top I have show screen and stuff like that. Make sure that you have it selected that you can view us. We have some questions about printing the patterns. If you didn't have time to print them, there is one in the handout section, an 8.5 by 11, that you can print out for this class. And then we can deal with your other patterns later yeah and anybody that got an email from me um, use those instead of the mail big pile ones this time because there was some snafu mail big pile had but I've talked to them and I think we've got it cleared up we have 24 people. 24 I think we're ready to start if if the last three people are late they're late okay we're gonna make leotards out oh, there yeah, have fun um, so what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to review the radial projection, which is how you can enlarge your small uh, leotard base into the actual size. And the reason we've been putting some of our patterns now in small scale is it's less expensive for you guys to print, and it's also less expensive for us to mail. Um, because we we pay based on size of file. So we're going to start doing more of our stretch wear small. But what's cool is with the small ones, you can adjust your style in little and then make it really, really big. And I'm going to show you some different ways, too, that you can take your small one and use a proportion wheel, which is like this best tool ever. This is something to write in your notes. Um, if you don't have a proportion dial or a proportion wheel, get one um, and we'll talk more about this later because you can really in theory take any one of these patterns and make it for any chest uh, and any waist and any height uh, if you get a proportion dial and play with it. You'll never have to buy one again. Get it on Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. Nancy sees us. Yay! Okay, everybody sees us. Okay, we're going to get started. So I'm going to show you first kind of uh, the principle again behind the radial projection, how you take something small and make it big. Uh, and then we're going to cut this apart and then um, just kind of go through how do you chop up this small block so that we call this a block. So it's it's a leotard, but it's very basic. There's a front, a side front, and a back with a dart. We're going to talk about getting rid of the side front seam and getting rid of the dart. Um, but I've found any more that I like to have a seam or two in a leotard because um, it actually gives you somewhere to adjust it. A lot of times there'll be like a bubble in the back of a leotard and people just can continue to take in the side. But if they could actually take in the back or the side back, we'll get rid of the bubble without distorting the print. Because um, if you had stripes or flowers, sometimes you alter it so much to get it to fit that now you have a great big flower next to a little bitty flower. Um, and the radial projection video is on 
our Hall C on stage Facebook page. YouTube. On YouTube too. But also but also yeah. on the page. So you can review this. And what's really, really cool is you can use this to enlarge and shrink anything. Um, and it's a principle Rachel uses in the ohm class, which is really awesome. Um, okay, so here we go. So the 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 idea behind this, and it's like cooking with Julia Child. Part of mine is already done. Um, what I'm going to do is, let's see, do you want to back up just, mm -hmm. okay, perfect. We're getting adjusted stuff. <laughs> um, so what I've got, oh, that's good. Go um, she's going behind me. This is live, folks. So what I've done is this is the handout that's in, in the printout if you didn't print this out. And again, don't feel like you have to work along with this. I think you, you get more by just kind of watching, taking notes, and absorbing. But if you're a work along or work along. Um, so this is in one-third scale. So that means that this is one-third of the finished uh, product. So we're just going to take all these measurements by three. And the first thing you need to do to the bottom and to the left of your image is you just give yourself a starting point. Um, you could also work from any of the corners. You could work from the right over, from the top over. But you just need a starting point that's on the outside of the entire image. So that's my starting point. And what I'm going to do, when you look at your miniature pattern, the easiest thing is to sort out where are their straight lines. So like part of my side front is a straight line, my side seam is a straight line, across my waist is a straight line. So if you just block in some of the straight lines, uh, it will help you enlarge this quicker instead of finding, you know, there's no reason to find three dots on a line that's straight. You would just find, you know, where does the straight line start and stop. So like your side front essentially has uh, is a lot of straight lines. So so you can um, you can do this quick quickly if you just don't mark in every dot. And the other thing is is you'll see like for my side front I just marked in a couple spots and then I used a curved ruler. Curved in spot. Um, my do rag. Uh, you know you can also uh, visually repeat what's on here. So like if you can see my back armhole curve is kind of this shape, right? Instead of putting a dozen spots on it, just find, you know, maybe two spots and then use a curved ruler to connect the dots instead of stressing out and making a whole bunch of spots. So we're going to do the first, the little first little bit of this. So I've got a yardstick or meters if you're on meters. Um, I'm going to put the zero of my measuring device on my X. And I'm going to do my center front line, which is this great big long straight line. So I'm going to go to the very top of my center front, and it's uh, 10 and 3 quarters times 3. But uh, you can also use um, logic. You can use logic. Uh, it's easier for me to multiply 11 by 3, so I'm going to go up to 33 and then just take away 3 quarters. That should make that makes sense, right? That makes sense. That makes sense? Rachel's our studio really audience today. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I've heard this before. She's heard this before. <laughs> then I'm going to find the bottom of my center front, which is an easy one. It's 7 inches over from my 0, so 7 and 3 is 21. So I'm going to mark that. And already I can put the whole center front in. So you need to make sure that you are always starting on your starting point. That your your zero, your X marks the spot is always the zero on your ruler. So we'll do some more points on the front here. So I'm gonna put in my neck and my shoulder now and I'm gonna just put one dot right in the center, center of my neck and from zero to that point of my neck is ten and a half. So I'm measuring from my X marks the spot to where it hits the miniature pattern is 10 and a half. So 10, time, 10 times 3 is 30 and a half times 3 is 1 and a half. So I'm going to go out 31 and a half and make a mark for my neck. And then I'm going to do the top of my neck 
which is again 10 and 3 quarters times 3, which is 32 and a quarter. And then now I've got my neck. So I'm going to take my curb ruler. And the great thing about stretchy stuff um, is that it's stretchy and that, you know, you still, <laughs> the great thing about stretchy stuff is it's stretchy. You want to be accurate, but uh, you don't have to be as, you know, microscopically precise as if you're making a bodice. Um, so we've already got the center front, the neck in. Then I'm going to finish my shoulder, and there's no reason to measure the middle of my shoulder, just the two edges of the straight line. And I've got about nine and five eighths, so that's that's a hard one. That's eighteen, nineteen and a half plus three eighths. So no, no, it's twenty-seven, twenty-eight and a half plus three eighths. So that's twenty-eight and seven eighths. Everybody can do math better than me at home, I'm sure. So now I'm going to put my shoulder in. Now I'm going to put in my front of my armhole that's on my front. So always going back to zero. And another thing that's handy to do is as you bend your ruler around, look for spots that are easier to multiply. So I wouldn't do nine and three eighths necessarily if it's easier to do nine and a quarter. So see, you can move your ruler and look for easier things to multiply. So I've got 18 and 3 quarters, no, 27 and 3 quarters. I'm, I'm not taking it times 3. It's times 3, you guys. And then I have 8 and 3 quarters times 3. So that is 27, 26 and a quarter. It's that new math you can subtract to add. So there's my arm hole. And we'll do a few more spots on the front, and then we're going to be. So this is kind of making sense to anybody. If, if anybody's lost on a step of this, now's the time to just type in any questions. Tell Rachel your question on this part of it. That's all we've covered. That's all we've covered. No, I know, I know. <laughs> so I've got the bottom of my armhole. Then I'm going to find uh, a part of the curve on the front, so eight and a half times three, that's 24, 25 and a half. Showing and off your turban. My turban, I know. <laughs> Spandex house. It's time we go back to New York. We're Get running out of, we're running out of, yeah, I know. We like to go to New York just to eat cold sesame noodles it's so good. at the excellent dumpling house. On Lafayette Street in Chinatown. We bring them on the plane. Yes, yeah, we do. <laughs> we fly home with noodles. No questions. No questions. So how cool is this that you can use this um, to enlarge things from small? And uh, I always, um, when we've got the back, the side front, and the center front, so this is our center front, you would cut this on the fold. Um, I just tell people that this already has a quarter inch seam allowance in it. Uh, you wouldn't really start adding seam allowance until you start adding tons and tons and tons of seams. But again, this is a block uh, and it makes a basic shape. So we're going to be showing you how to adjust this basic shape. Um, and I'm going to cut out several. I've got three sheets of paper underneath here so that you guys can watch me cut and tape for a while because um, that's kind of the next step of this. But Let's look again at this little thing and the proportion dial. And it'll be hard for you to see the numbers on here, but if I, if I talk a little bit about it, it'll start to make sense. So, so let's say that my, my miniature block is good to go, but I need it for a larger chest. So let's say that uh, this is a 15-inch back neck to waist, so the height from the back of their neck to the waist is 15 inches. And the chest is 32, but let's say now that I need a chest for a 36-inch girl. So we're going to say I want a 36-inch chest, but I only have a 32. So I have a 32-inch chest, and I need a 36-inch chest. What's really cool about modern copy machines is that you can, um, you can enlarge the Y separately from the X axis. So a copy machine has a, a spot now that says XY for enlarging. So you would go to the copy machine and figure out which direction is X and which direction is Y, because it's not always the same. 
but then using your proportion wheel from Amazon, they sell a bigger one too. This one's not it's readers. It's the travel one. Yeah, it's the travel one. <laughs> um, so uh, on the dial it says original and the inside dial. So I don't know if you can see it, but there's two. There's an inside. There's an inside dial and an outside dial. So on my inside dial, I'm going to find my original chest, which is 32. So I've got 32, and I'm going to turn it until it hits 36 on the outside dial. So we want to make a 32 chest a 36 chest now. Then how cool is this? In this little window, it tells me in the little window, <laughs> I, it's like doing uh, patterning with Helen Keller. Um, in the little window, it tells me it needs to be 112% bigger. So I can go to the copy center and I can enlarge my little one 112% across or across but not change it up and down then you can just check your other measurements so my original waist was 25 so I'm not going to turn the dial now I'm going to just look for 25 and my new waist is 28 so I can make a 36 bust and a 28 waist by enlarging this across 112 percent this is something to think about in bed, but if you get this dial, I guarantee you'll find all kinds of uses for it. You don't have to do algebra. You don't have to do algebra. <laughs> and then the thing to use common sense is, right, so let's say we've, we've enlarged this, and let's say our new crotch is now super duper duper wide. Then in the neck and the crotch, you're going to go in in a few places and use, you know, use your um, eyeballing skills. And, and you might shrink some things that got too large, but now the chest is larger and the waist is larger. So in theory, you can make a chart with one of these little ones and just make custom sizes for all of your girls. Um, and the other thing that kind of connects to that is, uh, so when you have a block made in a size, the best thing is to just put it on somebody who's that size and fit it because you might find... Um, I find the Lycra everybody gets isn't always the same even for us from time to time. The Lycra shifts depending on what they did in the factory. And also you'll find that some companies of girls like to be a little freer in Lycra and some of them like it skin tight. So you can adjust the fit. So once you've adjusted the fit on your middle girl in your group of sizes, then you can make all your different sizes. How fun is that? Have thumbs up. We're moving on. No any questions. any questions about the proportion dial and how great it is? You can use it to do all sorts of stuff in all sorts of directions. No? Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to talk about um, what seams you can get rid of depending on your style. So you might not want a dart in the back, and you might not want a side front seam. Um, I think what I'll do first is I'm going to cut this out and serge it together just like it is and we'll put it on the dress form so you guys can see that. And we always like when I do this stuff, we like to cut several out and just label what size they are so for your next adventure um, it's ready to go. And I'm going to grab a crappy rotary cutter instead of this one that I just put a new blade in because if your house is like our house, uh, the rotary cutters don't last very long. Was am. Now, while I cut this out, is a good time to dream up some questions, maybe not about what we're doing on this step, because I can answer them while I'm making my first sample of our body block. So I'm cutting out three at a time, and it's good on your on the ones that are your copies to mark the waist right away and then also to mark the dart because we'll want to chop out that dart later. It's quite fun. No one has any questions. Nobody has any questions. Anything. Oh, here we go. If you want to change the chest size but keep the waist the same as the original, That's how would you go about question. it? That's a good question. Okay, so what you would do then, right? you would make your new chest size and then you would cut it across where you imagine the chest is. So you'd make your 
new chest, cut across it. Then you're going to, at the same height, make that cut across the waist size that you like. Then you just cut into your pieces and angle them back to fit the waist so that you've got the large chest but the original waist. Did that make sense? I can cut one out later and show that clearer too. Yes, How, she says it makes that sense. That makes sense. And then are there patterns for sleeves available? What we're doing, so okay, so I give this a lot of thought while I've been traveling around the Midwest these last couple weeks. We were going to send everybody several women's sleeve sizes, but instead we're just going to send you the method we use tomorrow, uh, and it'll be in the handout section of how to draft any size stretch sleeve, man, woman, or child for anybody forever, which I think is much more practical. So uh, That's in the Leo 2 class, yeah, that's and you so, can still sign up for that yeah, if you're not. So we're going to do that in the class tomorrow. And then for tomorrow, anybody that's taking the one tomorrow, um, if you don't have the booty short instructions, let us know that also um, so we can send those on. Ideally, you've had the booty short class, but if not, it's not a problem. We've got someone again with a scale issue with their yes. um, file. We oh, sent shoot. new files. Yeah, there should have so. been a new one sent from me today, but uh, just let us know and we will resend them tomorrow. But yeah, it should be the same scale as the one you printed out for the just handout. Now. But how cool is this, right? Okay, so here's me being teachery. Um, it doesn't even, we could, it, if it didn't print right and you're using the Acrobat Reader at home, print it out and see what size that box is, right? So if my box was an inch and a quarter, I'm going to use my proportion wheel. And there's an app for this too. If you just type in proportion wheel in um, the app store of uh, iPhone, I can turn my inch and a quarter or whatever amount it is to three inches. Then in Adobe Reader, I would tell it to enlarge everything about 210, 240, 241%, and then it would be the right size. She said but, the new file is also small. Make sure you're using Adobe oh, Reader. The new one should be right. Uh, anything that came in the email should be right. It might be, we found that sometimes, um, depending on if you're on Windows or Mac. And I, don't just use whatever opens at default. Yeah, use Adobe Reader. You have to use Adobe Reader. And I, we've discovered that sometimes, but not very often, that when people set up their computer the very first time or got their very first odd-shaped file, they clicked a box that told the computer to go ahead and compress things that are big. So that may be what's happening. Um, but just... Uh, let us know, definitely identify yourself to Rachel, who still is having trouble, and we will send those out again, first thing in the morning. Yeah, we'll send you a message. How do you adjust for two-way stretch instead of a four-way? By four-way stretch. Um, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> so, to adjust for two-way stretch, you would probably uh, have the most luck putting the most stretch up and down. Then, you need to figure out for, for every few inches of vertical that you don't have stretch, how much you need to add. And actually, I can show you guys if I can find the luggage scale. There's a really roundabout way to do this, which I can show you. Um, it might be over there. It might not. Um, to adjust the stretch for a different type of fabric. Uh, and this is one of those things, too, to like just kind of think about. And the, uh, the other thing that, that ties into that question is if you have a, a two-way stretch, um, lots of times I've cut, uh, so if somebody's designed something in stretch velvet, which is really stretchy one way and no stretch the other way, well, if the velvet doesn't have a really strong nap, sometimes we'll cut it on the bias. Or if somebody uh, selects like a jersey that's really stretchy one way and not the other way, you can still cut stretch fabric on the bias. And if you take your two-way stretch and pull the bias, you'll kind of feel that it uh, it's more stretchy. So I'm going to cut this dart out, and then I'm going to show you guys this really, really wild thing that you can do with a luggage scale or a fish scale. 
it's it's very bizarre but very practical. Um, and there's a story behind it, and I love telling stories. There's one question. After yeah, that. yeah. Are you ready for it? No, let's do the fish yeah. scale, and then we'll get to the next one. So I'm just putting my copies aside, and we're going to. I'm going to get a safety pin real quick. Oh, where's that table? They're on that table. I got one. We've been cleaning. Well, Rachel's been cleaning while I've been goofing around. Um, so this is weird, but it's I've used this a lot. And actually, I came up with this uh, with Sandra Woodall, who is a fabulous costume designer. She designed a lot for the Joffrey. And... She designed a lot of stuff that had fabric with completely different stretches. So to figure out how much you need to add every inch, so, so we're pretending that we have a two-way stretch fabric and a four-way stretch fabric, and our, our pattern works for the four-way stretch, but it's probably not long enough for the two-way stretch. So what you can do, and you guys won't be able to see the numbers on here, but you can listen to the idea behind it is we're going to take a long edge or a one direction of our four-way stretch fabric and I'm I'm going to measure an arbitrary amount right so I'm going to measure five inches because that's probably a little bit easier this is very screwy but it works really really well hopefully somebody's already had their aha moment I don't even know if Rachel's seen this Have no you, seen that? <laughs> you pick an arbitrary amount so in algebra that would be your constant or your median oh. or something I'm not sure what this arbitrary amount is called but I'm gonna take five inches of my stretchy my four-way stretch and I'm gonna pull it to ten inches and at ten inches uh, it's I'm using five pounds of pressure to stretch at 10 inches, right? So I'm going to write that down. Five, five pounds makes 10 inches. I bet I'm going to mess this up, but you guys will, you guys will sort this out. Then I have some stretch mesh here, which actually doesn't stretch a whole lot up and down. Oh no, it's too stretchy. It's too stretchy. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna double it up. So we're simulating a fabric that isn't as stretchy, right? So now I'm gonna measure my five inches again. And I'm using a scale to figure out the amount of pressure. This is probably not what you guys thought we were doing today. So my five inches at five pounds only stretches to eight and a half with my less stretchy fabric. So, so my other fabric, five pounds, it only stretches to eight and a half inches. And that's five inches also. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out how many inches at five pounds does it take to get to ten inches. So I'm gonna just work a little further down my fabric and I'm gonna just look and try a couple things. It's actually about six and a half. So six and a half inches is what I need in my new fabric. Is everybody completely lost? I, <laughs> You're just like I hope not. We're just playing with stuff. Measuring. So 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 what we used we used science and math. Um, so so instead of five inches, you good to get to ten inches. I need six and a half inches to get to ten inches. This makes sense, right? It's making right? sense. It then. makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Rachel, you're on board? I have been responding. She, oh, she <laughs> hasn't been listening. So what would that mean then? So if this back fits my Lycra perfect. 6.5 pounds, not inches. Oh, six. <laughs> no, no. I need 6.5 inches at 5 pounds to get to 10 inches. I swear to God. Who is that? I'm not um, telling you No, don't hands. tell me. So my original fabric. Five inches of fabric at five pounds stretches to ten inches. My new fabric, five inches at five pounds, didn't stretch to ten inches. So I worked my way down the fabric until I found at five pounds how much stretches to ten inches. And it's six and a half inches at five pounds stretches to ten inches. It's amazing. It's moral I swear of the story, five four-way stretch. <laughs> five four-way stretch, yes, by life. <laughs> 
Um, so then you would just go across your pattern and every five inches cut across it and you need to add an inch and a half vertical so now it will fit in your two-way stretch fabric. It's genius. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's make this up. Oh, then Ray, there was another question. Um, Did that answer it? I hope you guys are all cheering at home. Um, that's yes, what's fun. Thank you. Because this these are different every time. So so you guys got something the last people didn't get. Um, okay, so now uh, ask more questions and I'm gonna so cut that's out one and a half inches across every five inches. Yeah, for every five inches on my pattern vertical. So we're putting the, the non-stretchy up and down. For every five inches, I need to make it six and a half inches. But it'll be different for every fabric in every scenario. So please don't don't cut all your patterns up and add an inch and a half every five inches and make some train wrecks, you know. Or we call that experimenting, right? Make some experiments. Okay, and then one more question. <clears throat> Since I make lots of plus sizes, are the, is there any difference with the proportions for them? Or just use the measurements they have and play with the proportion? Use the measurement they have and play with the proportion dial to sort out your new proportions. Um, then you'll just need to look close, though, at the crotches and at the necks and stuff to make sure that those areas don't get too big um, because a larger busted woman might still have a similar crotch to a not large busted woman. I wide mean, crotch. Yeah, you don't want you don't want wide crotch. You don't want wide crotch. Okay. All crotches are the same. They're not all yeah they're I mean, similar. Yeah. Roughly. We're, they're roughly the same. Um, let's see. More questions while I cut this no, out. No, no more questions yet. Oh, here we go. Um, any info on children versus adult sizes? No, it all works the same. All this stuff uh, and, and adjusting the size will work the same for kids. And then here's, here's two handy numbers to write down. Um, and folks that did booty shorts, will this should be familiar. The, the amount we shrink a pattern around for four-way stretch lycra Look, I put in a new blade, but that doesn't make my table. It's better. the mat. It's the mat. Um, around the body, we usually uh, shrink everything 12%. So we shrink uh, uh, negative ease around a body would be like minus 12%. So if I had a 40-inch chest, I would, run, would want my stretch to be... 12% less around. Then up and down, we only do about 8% because you don't want stuff as tight vertically as you do around the body. Uh, and that helps prevent camel toe. Cam you finally said I, it. I try to work it in every class. <laughs> crotch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and count how many times we say crotch in the class, too. So, yeah. So, if you have a measurement, if you, so say, and this will come up with the sleeve tomorrow, but say you were drafting tights for somebody and you know how long their leg is and you know how far down to their thigh, how far down to their knee, and how far down to their ankle. And then if you also know how big around is their ankle, knee, and thigh, you would take all your up and down, so your out seam measurement times 0.88, which is, no, up and down, let me back up, up and down is times 0.92 because you want it to be 8% less up and down and you want it to be 12% less around. So your around measurements you would take times 0.88 and your up and down measurements you would take times 0.92. Did I totally lose everybody there? No, they've been fighting with these issues. Good, oh good. And then again, that's for the four-way stretch that we usually use, which we uh, get a lot from Spandex House. And another great place um, for stretch stuff now is Oriel Textiles. And they sell wholesale, but anybody can register really easily for a wholesale uh, number, especially if you make any amount of income uh, making leotards. Oh, I thought the, Am the Amazon guy's outside. I don't want him to see me in the fruit turban. Um, so.
So now I've cut my side front, my back out, and I'm going to cut out my front front. And I actually like using this pattern with all the seams in it because I always find uh, the audience and the dancers are more impressed by something that fits really well as opposed to something that you've gotten rid of all the seams. Um, but that's just my opinion. So in two seconds, we're going to surge this together. And you can see, oh, it kind of matches Rachel's t-shirt, the pink. It matches your shirt. You have to get real low. <laughs> Don't <laughs> Show the shirt cut again. your hair off. <laughs> IE Truck Stop, that's our sponsor today. That and Starbucks. Yes, two people asking, it's Oreo Textile. O -R -I -O -L -E. I don't know how you spell it, but their book is out here. It's right yeah. Oreo. Oreo, like the bird. Yeah. And they've got a sample book full of um, some different sparkle nets, all sorts of bangaline, organzas, lycras, stretch meshes, and their sample book runs $100. Um, so if you can get a wholesale number and get their sample book, uh, I'll just show it real it's quick. It's huge. Let me show you their $100 it's cool. sample book. So it's worth getting a wholesale number because a lot of stuff that you're buying for eight, ten, twelve, sixteen dollars a yard for, you would be surprised to find out that they're actually two to three dollars a yard. Um, like one really good one is we buy tons of bangling from here. I don't know if you guys use bangling. It's it's a type of file. Um, when we go to Joann's or Hobby Lobby. Um, we used to have Hancock, but we don't anymore. They were selling bangling for like six dollars a yard, and they were buying it for three seventy-five to five seventy-five. So it's worth the investment in a wholesale number, and the the wholesale number is a different price depending on your state. Um, but if you can get a wholesale status, you can get all this fabulous stuff from Oriole Textile uh, at what Joann's is paying for it. But you do have to buy a roll. But um, you can buy a roll from these guys with what you would buy five or six yards for at the fabric store. So it's a good investment, especially oh, how hard that is. Then the great thing, if you sign up and buy their gigantic book, when they have a new fabric come in, they will send you the thing to add to your book. So it's like a fabric club, great for hoarders. Okay, I'm going to go to the serger and wang this together. I didn't separate my scraps from the actual pieces, so we'll see if this turns into something. Um, so we're not to leg elastics or anything, but I just want to show you how great the shell of this looks. So I've got my back with the darts, so the first thing I'm going to do is surge in my darts. And you can pin this if you want, but you don't need to. Um, lots of times if we've got a dart in a stretch garment, we run off quite a bit of tail and then we knot it and then cut off the extra instead of fray checking it because sometimes the fray check is scratchy. Let's, let me make sure I make a right and a left. Usually I screw this up, you know, because I'm time. nervous. I actually do. <laughs> I screw it up every time. So I've got that, I've got that. So you can run off a tail and knot it. So I'll just do that really quick. Is a nice way to finish it instead of the fray check, especially if it's going to be up against their skin. So we just run off a tail like this and tie a knot in it. And this is great for that mom that you want her to stay in the hallway at the ballet studio instead of helping you in the costume room. She can knot all of your, all of your surging. We have a question. Yes, yes, yes. What do you do if you don't want a dart in the back? I'm going to show you how to work out the darts after uh, this step. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of the darts, how to move the darts, and how to get rid of the uh, side front seam also. But I love to keep a seam in the back. Um, some leotard patterns don't have any crotch in it, and that is one of the number one contributors to um, camel toe or moose knuckle depending on where you're from. Um, and having a seam in the back is really really great because uh, you can control the fit a little bit more too. It leaves you something to take in and let out. So I've got my back together. And do you surge with three or four threads? Four threads please. Three it just isn't stretchy enough. Uh, and another thing is after you surge a piece or two 
really stretch it to see if stitches are popping. And if they are, it means that your stitch is too long. You need closer stitches to avoid stitches that pop. And we have another question that might... Lead me to say camel toe? Yeah, it will. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm ready. The question is... You ready? Yeah. What is camel toe? <laughs> what is camel toe? Camel toe. What country? <laughs> camel toe is when a girl's anatomy is strangled by the crotch of her stretch garment. And then we, that's camel toe. Look into the camel. But some people call it moose knuckle. It depends on It your depends reach. on where you're at, yeah. <laughs> Tell us what you call that where you're from. We've got people <laughs> all over the world. So you can also mark, uh, when you're making just this really, really basic shape, if you want, mark the waist so that you can see that you're lining the waist. Up. <laughs> that is the best definition I've heard for that. <laughs> oh, good. Well, you know, we want to make sure people get their money's worth. Right. And I, I definitely find, unless we're matching a print on a stretch thing, that I have much more success. So see what I did there? I sewed a little bit. I found the bottom of my seam, and now I'm just finding the middle. It's a lot faster to use all the pins uh, connected to your hands instead of actually pinning stuff. It saves time, and I think you're more accurate if you use your hands. Pretend you work in a factory, and then and then make a leotard. Well, that's kind of sad. I hope I haven't offended anybody who works in the family. I'm glad you're not in politics. I'm not in politics. No, I wouldn't do very good. Okay. Someone else thought moose knuckle was when it's too tight on men. Oh! Maybe, maybe it is. Bigger just... hooks. <laughs> I'm going to adopt that. So we're almost to where we can put this on the dress form, and then we'll move on. How are we doing on time? We're not out of time. We got a lot of time. Six sixteen. Oh, good. Okay. So, so after we ooh and not ah, how great this fits, we'll talk a little bit about this, and then I will show you how to get rid of uh, darts and seams and the principle to moving darts and seams, and then we will um, change the style and cut out another leotard. Uh, and then I'll show you a couple different ways that we deal with binding stuff. Uh, and hopefully, I think we'll have enough time for me to make uh, a just one thing with making part of it stretch mesh, because it stretches different than the liner. So your shell, right, this thing that we're calling a block, it goes all the way up to the neck and the front and the back. So I'm not actually, sur I didn't serge my entire center back together so that I can put it on the dress form. But what's cool, too, is you can make these blocks just in plain fabric. And if you've got a, a production where you're in need of three or four styles of similar leotards, you just put it on your medium-sized girl, fit it, and then in different color Sharpies, right on the girl, draw your different styles. Then when you cut it up, you've got several patterns uh, with different styling ready to go for everybody. So let's... Oh, look at the leotard. It's a tube. Um, oh, I didn't sew the crotch together. Crotch. Crotch. We usually tell people to count how many times we say it. How's the attentiveness, Rachel? Is a lot of people Let cyber me check. shopping. Oh, we got one. Somebody's <laughs> not watching. That's all right. If it's a deal on Lush, then we totally understand. So now, although this has darts and seams in it, uh, I like darts and seams. Oh, good. I put the front on the front and everything. It's my turban is sliding. So... Minus, we don't have a leg elastic in here yet, but this sucker fits, other than it's a little twisted, this fits remarkably well. So I started with the size for our size. They're impressed. One. Right? Doesn't that look good? I mean, it looks good just blank like this. 
So then, you know, right, we don't have anything pulling our butt down. Um, but you'll see that there's actually a bit of room here, which is good because this dress form doesn't have a butt. And I like to actually have a little extra fabric in the back. It helps um, if you fit this so, so much, if you fit this until you didn't have any extra fabric in the back, that's when this kind of stuff starts to happen. You actually need a cup in the fabric to, I just pat my butt, you need extra fabric so that it actually will stay where you want it. If you fit it before the elastic or even with the elastic so tight, then, then is when you start to have to glue stuff down. And there's a great product, here's another one to write down, called It Stays, just it and then the word stays from Manhattan Wardrobe Su Supply in New York. Manhattan Wardrobe Supply, get their catalog. Um, it Stays is butt glue. What it is is it's medical adhesive on a roll-on that you can put in certain places and just glue the fabric right to the girl. And it's water soluble. I'm wearing some right now. Um, <laughs> We should find an alternative <laughs> use for it. Yeah, though. right? Uh, it so, tastes good. <laughs> so here's the shell, um, which is pretty great. And you'll see, too, that this makes up kind of an open neck. So if you were dra when you were drafting this, you can just, you know, use, use what you're seeing here and the shape here. It's pretty close to this same neck hole. So if you wanted it, if you wanted to fill the neck in, you would just add in, you would just raise the neck and close it up a little bit. And, and so that means you would add fabric to the neck instead of just completely taking it away. But this gives you a great place to take in the back. You can actually, I can, it fits so well I can't grab it. You can take in the back, you can take in the sides, and you can shape in the side front some. Uh, and the seam on this, it's just a little bit to the outside of the nipples so that it's not rubbing on our nipples, which is almost as bad as camel toe. Um, Question. Do you like to use wooly nylon in your surgery for stand-up? You know what? Long, long time ago, I loved wooly nylon. We have such great surgers that are... Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> they're so... We've got the stitch so good that you can step on it. I like to step on it and yank a garment to see if I can pop a stitch. Some home surgers don't um, get don't let you adjust the stitches much, even some of the fancier ones. So then you would put woolly nylon in your looper and in your in both loopers. So in your under looper and your over looper, but not in the needles. If you put it in the needles. Um, Sometimes the stitch shows when you pull on it, and, and the needle threads are more likely to pop. And then we have someone who's interested in high hips and low backs for when you talk about changing styles. Yeah, so we're going to do one with a really, really low back. High hip, that's super duper easy to adjust in your flat pattern. Um, if anybody's bought our Leo Trio set, which is three fun leotard patterns, it's got different markings on it to raise and lower the hip, and kind of what I always try to do is I've seen a lot of Leos manufactured for sale and ones that people have made themselves where they raise it too far over on the side. So if you want to raise the hip, you have to think about raising it at that part where her leg creases into her body, which is more, it's like more to the front of the side seam than it is at the side seam. So if you raise the hip, closer to the front, it still gives you enough stuff to pull down in the back. And if, if you raise this too far to the side, then you're going to be fighting with this problem the entire time. Um, low backs, we'll draft our next one with a low back. So whether you're getting rid of darts and seams or leaving darts of seams, darts and seams, um, when you're at this stage is when you can play with a marker to adjust your styling, or um, you can use, you can be real fashiony and use some elastic. So this, if you've got a dress form at home, you can use elastic to kind of paint on here. And the elastic's nice because you can change your mind instead of marking the whole thing up. So you can, you can use this to create all sorts of new styles, right? If you were doing asymmetrical or a really low neck or this is what I did the first day. I with you. Yeah. She made <laughs> reindeer. So it gets to work. Make reindeer. 
she drew, she <laughs> was, you're like draw lines. Draw lines. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so so you can do all sorts of things from this to end up with all sorts of, of style. You're just eliminating fabric or changing fabric. Turban won't stay on. He has um, bad hair under there. I have really bad hair. Then the thing though to remember is so this is good information. When you're making a stretch garment, you need tension coming. Uh, from the top and from the bottom essentially. So if we do this cut and mirror it, right? So everybody loves a pointy thing. Um, we have tension that the shoulder strap is going to lift this up and straighten it out. And we have tension from the bottom because it's all connected to our trunk. So cuts like this where there's tension work really well. And I'll show you in a bit how you can also change this top to mesh. Cuts that don't work um, are this kind. Let me see if I can make a cut that doesn't work. When people have something that's more sweethearty, actually let me start here. Cuts that are convex, is that what it's uh, this part of the bowl? If you wanted a cut like this, you're going to have problems because there's no tension. So I'm, I'm trying to make kind of like a sweetheart, right? This would continue around. If right here, you do, you're not going to put a strap right there going up to her neck, but maybe you are. That's what's fun. If you have cuts like this that don't have continuous tension, they're going to lay down and flop. Um, so you could do a cut like this if you filled this in with mesh. You need the mesh to hold a concave cut up. But if I switch it to a con, convex, if I switch it like that, it'll stay because my strap is going to pull this up. And I'm also going to show you a few little uh, ways to improve spots like that. But you can, and you can also just take a sharpie and draw on stuff. Um, we have a question. What if they don't have the proper dress form? Is there a way to ask it? Santa? Um, you could, if you can, well, lots of times you just put it on a girl. Just find some girl that you can draw on. Um, the other thing, though, is you can do this flat because um, you've got an idea on the pattern where their nipple is. Like if I hold this, if I hold my side front up, if I know where her waist is and I can guess about where her nipple is, then I can put the, I can put my pieces together and figure out, okay, if I'm going to do a pointy strap, I probably need to come somewhere up in, up into this area to make sure she's still covered. And then will you be covering in the next class or anytime how to put a bra in or some kind of... Bra? We're going to touch on that in the next one. But um, uh, the inside bra, the idea really is that you're lining the front with an extra layer and a good way to do it is, uh, if I was going to line this one, I would take the exact same pattern piece and I would make it a little bit narrower for my inside, for my control panel. So the thing that's going to go closer to her skin, if you make the, the length the same but shrink the width of it by like an inch or an inch and a half, then the inside layer is what's compressing them or lifting them. and then the outside fabric won't be as stretched and it'll look it'll look more like it was made for Beyonce instead of you know Beyonce needs more support. Beyonce <laughs> needs more support. Um, the other thing you can do, uh, and I know it's it's hard without seeing it all made, is on your inside one, if you know where their under bust is, often we'll cut the inside one to like an inch or an inch and a half below their below their under bust. And you can just put a, an elastic slightly stretched on that so that it's kind of helping hold, hold her goods up too, you know. Yeah. And if uh, we've done Leo's, uh, when I was at the Joffrey, there's some really busty girls. To keep their busts even more controlled, we would take the elastic on the inside thing and run it all the way around so that she has a continuous loop of elastic hidden. And if the back is really low, so if this had a low back, you can run that elastic and angle it down into the back so that there's so that it's getting pulled all the way around. 
Because what you don't want is you don't want the elastic in the control thing so tight that it makes a pucker. It's hard to see. I always pick pink. <laughs> um, you don't want that elastic so tight that it's pulling that it's pulling the outside thing weird. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, we're going to get rid of darts and stuff. So let's scoot the camera towards you. Is it, are people finding things helpful? I hope. I need the positive reinforcement to continue. Could you make a square neck in a leotard? You can, but so so if I cut this with a square, I have to think about what's happening in the stretch, and it might mean that you actually, depending on where the tension is, and this is one of those things you should try it, to make a square, if you actually make the slightest little bit of a dip in it this way, it might straighten out into a square. Or, depending on the size of her bust and what, what you know if your square is completely square angled, you might try one where you make the dip the opposite, make a little bump up. You know, instead of straight across, make the center of it just a smidge higher. Then if her bust is fuller, when that stretches out, it'll, it'll level out the square. Yeah. Would the hidden continuous elastic be encased in a channel? No, it just gets zigzagged or cover stitched onto your inside thing. And and if you're only lining the front, if you're only lining the front, leave your elastic longer, hook it to your inside front, then you can just wrap it around on the inside and, and tack it into a couple seams. Uh, and then it doesn't show. With the square, would you sew elastic in pieces? Yeah. To make a square neck, you sew in one elastic. Then you sew in the other elastic, and then you usually do the bottom edge, and that's the only way you can make those nice corners. And which dress form company do you recommend? We just, you, these are from PGM, and they're from um, Gold Coast Sewing and Cutting in LA. And one's from Amazon, but we uh, Gold Coast is where we get them. I think it's Gold Coast. It's Gold Something Cutting and Sewing in LA. So now I'm going to show you how to get rid of darts, which is the next main phase of this class. Um, I should get a ruler that's smaller than the arts. I'll be right back. Who's up the latest? Chime in. Who's, who's got the latest time? Who's the farthest away? Yeah. They all think they're close. They're all real Just close. Neighbors. throw it out there. Um, we know Canada's on there. Canada's here. <laughs> so, okay, so let's, we're going to start from the back and work our way around to the front. So I am going to get rid of the dart in the back, and I am going to get rid of the side front seam so that we're going to have a front on the fold and two backs. So we're going to go from a five-piece, one, two, three. We're going to go from a five-piece costume to a three-piece costume. The dart in the back is the easiest to get rid of. All I'm going to do is measure uh, how big my dart is. It's an inch across. And then I'm also going to, I'm going to imagine that I have a straight line from the top to the bottom of my dart. Um, in fact, why don't I just draw it above and below it. So I'm imagining that I've got a, a prime meridian. A uh, <laughs> prime meridian going through my diet. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to make uh, a line perpendicular to that at the top and bottom. Spell perpendicular. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to try. P U R I N D I C K C U L U A R. Perpendicular. The other day you said, How do you spell tear? Not like tear, but, <laughs> but like tear. It's, it's different, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I did. Uh, I know that the middle of my dart is an inch. I've got an inch gap here, and I just took a line straight across both of my pieces to where the dart, this is called where it resolves or where it goes into nothing. This is a fisheye dart, um, or a French dart, depending on uh, where you are. Yeah. <laughs> so now my inch, I'm going to move it. So I'm going to take away a half an inch at the side and a half an inch more at the back. And the straight lines, you're just going to connect up to where the dart originally ended. So we're just taking the dart and moving it. And anybody that's taken pattern drafting 
uh, it's very, very similar. So I'm taking away the top part of my dart uh, here and there. <laughs> How technical is that? Here and there. Then I, I've got a little curve in my hip, so I want to keep that curve, but I still want to get rid of the dart. So, so if this was... Uh, how can you think about it? like like if I filled this in with with pinto beans right laying side by side the same amount of beans are coming out of these other places. That's the first thing you thought. Of. <laughs> yeah, I could I could think of a better explanation. If you painted it in with latex and cut the latex apart, the same amount would fit. So so see now I've just repeated. I've taken the the volume or the surface area of the dart out at the sides and at the back and then oh, I've already lost which was the good rotary cutter. This is the one with the new blade. I've got my crappy rotary cutter and I'm going to take that out. So now we don't have a dart in the back anywhere. And if we if we took this paper and in, in bent it and jammed it all in, it would fill in the dart. So the amount that was in the dart we just took out from the sides. Everybody's on board with that, right? And I'll, like just, I'll just tape in. So then you want to remember now we don't have a dart anymore. So we've gotten rid of the dart in the back. Now let's deal with the front. And then we'll change the neckline a little bit. Um, the front one the first thing you can do is just lay it together and we're trying to get rid of this amount so so if we put the front together it's essentially just another dart that we're getting rid of but um, there's there's a few ways you can do it you can tape it together and just move this whole amount to the outside but you get it gets really angly in the side but it still works um, what I like to do uh, and this uh, if you haven't played with flat patterning you need Starbucks break it's getting a lot of saliva. If you haven't played with flat patterning, it's all about adding and moving darts. And this chop, it might be familiar to somebody who's flat patterned. So I've kind of got these two, two straight planes here. I, if, I, if I cut across the waist of my side front, I can connect that to my trunk a little bit better. And I can connect this into my um, my side front to my front. So, but now I've got this problem here. I've got fabric, or my pattern is overlapping quite a bit. Well, so let me back up. I cut across my side front, right? And then I'm going to tape this into my front panty. So we're saying the panty part's the panty, even though it's not really a panty. Then I'm going to tape my other part into here. And I've got a little bit overlapping in the bust, like three-eighths of an inch. Totally fine because it's stretchy fabric and you can be more fluid with, with the patterning rules here. Then, so I'm going to tape that down. Now, this amount that I've got overlapping, so with patterning kind of, you think about like if you take something away, you have to give it back. So right now my side is too short. So what I'm going to do is this little bit that's overlapping. I feel like a weatherman because I'm watching this in reverse. Um, I'm going to cut my little bit that's overlapping off. And, and this is what's missing from my side seam. So all I'm going to do is just pick a spot and I'm going to chop into here. Somebody else. And I'm going to jam it into my side like that. And you could you could make this adjustment in the arm and at the hip. You could do it in either spot. But since the the majority of our our piece that we messed with, this is the longest edge. I'm adding it into the longest edge. But you can you can mess with that. Then, if I just chop, so then I'm going to just true it up. I'm going to cut off the little bit that doesn't look right. It's stretchy. Then, I have a little bit that doesn't line up in my waist. If it's not, so I've got like a quarter inch that doesn't line up here. Uh, if it was more than that, I might add a little to the bottom and take away a little from the top. But since it's such a minor difference, all I'm going to do is 
chop it out of the side seam only a little way up. So, however, that's a lot right there, but that made sense to everybody. Will the hip be higher now? Not really, because even though it looks higher right here, once we cut this out in fabric and put it on the girl, this is what's going to, it's going to come back this way down her body. So we have, we haven't really raised the hip. If we'd done something like this, would be the only time we actually would have raised the hip. Let's raise the hip a little bit on this one. Sound good? Let's raise the hip. So if I was using this leg hole just as it is, I would say it's ready to go um, for 3 8 inch elastic. So, so I, me, I would say there's 3 8 of an inch in here that can be folded up. But if you're raising up the hip a lot, you might want to add a smidge more back for elastic. So I'm going to lay my edges together. And like I was saying earlier, I like to raise it a little more at the side front, actually, than at the side. So I'm going to raise up. We're going to go 80s here. I'm going to raise up my side front. And then you just kind of keep twisting your ruler until you can um, get stuff to fit. Or look for pleasing curves. So I was just looking for a pleasing curve here. So we raise the hip a little while. Um, let's see. I think let's cut. The, everybody, that kind of made sense, right? You're just getting rid of extra. Let me even show you on another one, another front, um, another way you can deal with getting rid of that side front seam. But it's nice to have a side front seam because it gives you something to take in. You can also... Um, overlap the bust a little bit more. So see, we're losing about a half an inch in the bust, which if you wanted, you could come over and add it back, but since it's stretchy, you don't really need to. So this this goes back to flat patterning, moving the dart, and dealing with the overlap. So now I've got this huge overlap here. So I, I taped it together differently, and now I've wound up with an overlap at the bottom instead of at the waist. So all I'm going to do is chop off that overlap and I need to put it back into the costume in a, in a similar area. So if I just take kind of this much paper or pattern that I've lost and tape it back in, then now I'm going to just true up. So, so now my hip doesn't line up very well and I'm going to split the difference. So I'm going to just tape in a little piece of paper like that, and then I'm going to just clean up my curve with the ruler or by eyeballing. There. So now my hip looks really wild, right? It looks like it really sticks out, but it's going to fit exactly the same because we need the same amount going across from the center front to the hip. It's just we've, we've changed it a little bit from one to the other, but they'll both fit the same. What so is, that's how darts work. What is the change to elastic with higher hip? Um, we'll we'll talk about elastic more towards the end. But it all you do is measure the hole, like like it's easiest if you just measure your leg hole, and we use this same thing to figure out what amount of stretch the elastic needs to be. We usually put in about like eighty two to eighty five percent of elastic. So if my leg hole was 22 inches, and I just use this to figure out how many inches the elastic should be. Um, rather than just guess and testing. You know, lots of people go, oh, you make it three inches smaller, but that doesn't work for a child compared to an opera diva's leotard. You know, it's more about a ratio uh, and how many inches you lose for how many inches you've got. But so, um, that said, playing with this dial, this is jumping ahead a little bit. The rib, we get ribbed elastic from wah wax sewing. If you don't know wah wax, because you've got a catalog. I have the catalog with the backward scissors. Everybody get ready to take a picture of this uh, with the backward scissors. Um, I know that for the elastic that we usually use in the legs is 3 eighths of an inch. If my pattern's good, I know that if I put about 82 inches in. Look at this. Look, his, he's, he's holding his scissors wrong. But everybody write that down, W-A-W-A-K. They show you the price for retail and then the price that they charge you 
so that you can get it for less than you get it at Joann's, even with a coupon. Um, oh, then the other thing, when you put the elastic in, I like to put the front in flat. So here, like from here to here, I wouldn't stretch from here to here. I wouldn't really stretch the elastic. I just kind of lay it in and fold it over. Then I divide the rest out at like the bottom of my crotch and more at the back so that there's more elastic going under her butt and less pull in the front. And that also helps reduce camel toe in their crotch. Okay. Everybody's good? I'm going to cut out a leotard. After <coughs> I sneeze. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, let's get this out of the way. Wow, wax sewing. Use wow, wax sewing. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do here is now we have a three-piece leotard. So we have a front that's on the fold and two backs. Uh, you can you can use similar steps that we just did to get rid of a, the side seam if you wanted, but it's good to have something to fit. But if I filled this in with paper, if I filled this big gap in with paper, I can measure that much out of the back and you end up with a leotard pattern that looks something like this, but it will fit just the same. Ah. Okay, so let's change this sucker up a little bit. Let's make, um, let's do a kind of a simple cut. We're going to do just kind of a square-ish-ish -ish neck with mesh and a really, really low back. So I'm, so here's where you can have fun. You can just kind of draw in anything you want. So we're going to say that the top part of this is going to become mesh. So the first thing I'm going to do is give myself, it's so drawn on, but I'm going to give myself a couple notches and then I'm going to cut this apart. So now we've got lycra and mesh, and I want the neck to be a little bit more open, so I'm going to just pencil in my new neck. Then I'm going to I'm going to uh, imagine that my shoulders are sewn together, and if I so all I did here I just pivoted my front to my back, so that I can make this neck that I just drew in the front uh, tie into the back. So great, right? Everybody's on board. Everybody's on board. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to cut this off. And we're not done with this front yet either, but we're pretending this is mesh or a different color of lycra. So we're just, we're, we're in imagination land. Um, so now I've got mesh here, and I've got uh, mesh and lycra. So now I'm going to decide what I want to do in the back with my mesh. And I think I'm going to make it scoop way, 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 way down almost to her butt. Why not to her butt? Um, well, we don't want it to be too trashy. Let's see. A little trashy. Um, I'm just deciding. I'm going to do the kind where the mesh travels a little bit down the side seam. So the mesh doesn't, it's going to be a little artsy. What are you using for pattern paper? We like to just buy um, heavy-duty craft paper uh, in the States. We get it from, I'm drawing a blank. Where is it from? Uline. Yeah, Uline. Uline uh, they're like a warehouse supply store. Uline. Okay, so now I've got this lycra stuff here. So I've got lycra bottoms and mesh tops. And let me show you a really, really good trick um, to deal with necklines, whether it's mesh or lycra. So everybody's envisioning what the plan is here, right? We have lycra, lycra, mesh, mesh. And actually on my back, I'm going to give myself a notch too to line up. Now, um, there's a couple things we're going to do because we're making this out of mesh, right? And the mesh that I've got uh, is stretchier. So mesh isn't all the same. So you've got to kind of like guess and test and experiment a little bit. The mesh that I've got is stretchier one direction than the lycra, but it's about the same stretch as the lycra the other way. Sometimes you'll find mesh that's super stretchy one way and it doesn't stretch it all the other way. But what I've got is a mesh that's really stretchy one way and then the other way it's similar to my lycra. 
So what I'm going to do, my direction that the mesh is too stretchy, let me actually grab my mesh. Um, cool. We're going to make lavender and blue leotard here. It'll be for sale tomorrow online. Um, he knows how to say lavender. Lavender. Um, <laughs> it's really stretchy one way. So if I just cut my mesh with this pattern piece that I just freed from, from the bottom part of my leotard, it's going to be too stretchy across and it's not going to look good. So um, through lots of experimenting and making lots of leotards, I know that I actually have to make my mesh piece smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put about three vertical cuts into my mesh, into the front and into the back. And you can just kind of divide it across the pattern. And you can also get really wild and use the luggage thing with this to figure out how much less mesh we need. But I'm, I'm not new to this show. And I know if I take out about an inch and a half across the whole front or three quarters on each side, since we're only dealing with half, that it's going to fit pretty darn good. So now, if you can see what I've got on my front, my mesh bit actually doesn't fit all the way to the edge of my lycra bit. I'm going to actually stretch the mesh across to make it fit. Okay? That should have been like some people at home went, aha, maybe. I don't know. Usually we have a studio audience. Poor Rachel, just I keep looking at her. Like, that keeps you should just be really mind. excited about this. So now... Yeah, we got light bulbs. Oh, good. You got light bulbs. <laughs> so now I'm going to shrink my mesh across the back also a little bit. And then where you end up with things that don't line up now, you just split the difference. So, so tomorrow, if you're taking tomorrow also, you'll hear me say a lot, just split the difference. Um, it's like such a vague cop-out answer, but now I'm going to just put some more tape on it. If your pattern is loaded with tape, you know it's a good one. If anybody follows Eric Winterling on Instagram or Facebook, he owns a fabulous studio in New York. There was a picture the other day of the underside of his table, and it was just all things covered in tape, and I felt better about myself. I'm like, okay. That's Travis. That's just covered in tape. So now, okay, so right, so now we have like a nice quick sew or bird of quality leotard pattern, but I'm going to show you how to take it to that better Beyonce step. Um, what we're going to do now is tighten up the neck because lots of times you end up with these little pillowy things right here in the neck. Oh, you don't have to do it. So, so if we cut this just like it is, even though we shrank it across, we shrank it this way, if we can tighten up this edge, it just makes it a little more gourmet. So pirate hat won't stay on. Right. So now we're going to make it more gourmet. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put a few slices from the bottom to the top in this sucker. And all I'm going to do now, so we shrank the whole thing across, right? We shrank the whole front neck this way, and I put a couple slices into it. So I sliced from the top to the bottom of the piece. Now I'm going to overlap a little bit of the top, tightening up the top edge a smidge, but we're not messing with the bottom edge anymore. Ha, ha, ha. This makes it a Vogue pattern now and not a quick sew or a Berta pattern. Then... I want to tighten up my back neck too, but I don't really want to cut it all the way down to here, so I'm going to just put like a chop over to the armhole in a couple spots. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to tighten up my back neck. Uh -huh. Everybody's on board with that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they are. Ah! You guys are going to run us out of business because everybody's going to have leotard patterns for life. <laughs> And never need one again. Okay, so now I'm going to look at this thing and review and, and reassess what we did. We raised our thigh a little bit, and we trued it up or blended together our thigh. Then we chopped, we lowered our neck in the front and back. We put our shoulder seams together to see that they indeed fit, and if they didn't fit, um, we just kind of reevaluate. Yes. Uh, we have a couple people asking Let's do some again. questions. 
how do you know how much to reduce for the mesh? So for the mesh, um, the only great advice I can give you is that it needs to be a little bit smaller across and to play with it. If you're really, really dying to try this thing out, you could figure out that the mesh is too stretchy and how much less mesh do you need. Uh, and for, for the spandex house stretch mesh, why don't I just figure out right now a number for everybody to write down? And then you can recreate what I just did. Does that sound good? So I would say for stretch mesh from spandex house, the stretchy way, not the not a stretchy way, that I made my six inches about well about five well about five inches. So what you could imagine is for for every six inches, get rid of an inch. So every three inches, you would get rid of a half an inch. Every inch and a half, get rid of a quarter. So that, that would be a good note. So for your stretch mesh, for every inch and a half that's lycra, make your stretch mesh a quarter less. And I think that will be a good formula. If not, you can curse me when it doesn't fit. Okay, I'm going to cut this out. So I'm going to cut my back on the fold now because I pretty much got rid of where, where I couldn't cut it on the fold. One more question. Yeah. Did you add seam allowance where you cut the mesh no, and lycra? No, because I, if I was putting a whole bunch of cuts into this sucker, I would add a, a, like just a smidge less than a quarter of an inch to each of those seams. But since I've only put one cut in there, I'm, I'm not going to add seam allowance. And also, I know that uh, I, I've used my block over here, and, I, and messing with my block, I feel like if I was putting this on a girl, I might just tighten it all up a little bit. So I'm choosing this time not to add seam allowance. Like, I wasn't picking my nose. <laughs> I had a fleck. Okay, so I'm going to cut this sucker out. And then we're going to sew it together and put binding on it and stuff. This is a good time for more questions. Run to the bathroom. Finish what you're doing in the Amazon window. You need some more room here. This is how his table always. I know. It's so annoying. I'm Look at this. sorry. Those shelves. Oh, my table. Oh, it's actually yeah, covered can, stuff right oh, now because we're cleaning. We're cleaning. <laughs> Her table is usually blank and ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to cut my front on the fold. And I'm going to cut two backs out. And, I'm, and I know where the waist of my pattern is. So you could say that the waist is your cross grain or where you want the most stretch. So I'm cutting my front. I think this is going to be pretty. I think we're going to sell this. Um, so I'm going to cut out my front. So I'm putting my, my waist uh, on, the, on the, the cross of my fabric. And a lot of the spandex... Um, uh, that we use is the same both directions. So it doesn't matter if you cut it on the straight or the cross. And now that I've started cutting this out, I kind of wish I would have put a quarter inch. Oh, this new blade does make a difference. Um, at the armhole. I wish I had put a smidge in the armhole, but I didn't. So there you go. And since I put notches on here, I think I will mark my notches for when I line my mesh and stuff up. Whoa, oh, tell. You didn't use any weight. No, well, <laughs> not really. I'm working on the fly here. Um, the other thing where I've got this, this severe point, if I just cut across the point of my lycra, it'll help me um, work it into the next pieces. Does that make sense? So if I, I just cut across my point, you could add seam allowance here, and then you'll, but you should square off your point so that it looks more like a commercial sewing pattern, and then it's easier to line up. Okay, now let's cut out our purple mesh. Sounds like a song lyric. Purple mesh, purple mesh. How are we on time? So I have to sew this really, really. Six fifty-eight. Oh, we're good. We're going to get to bindings and a few more questions. 
So now, actually, I'm folding. I want my most stretchy to go around my body. This isn't for me. <laughs> but he does try on. I do try on as many nice things as I can. <laughs> In college, my poor roommate, I got stuck in a in a leotard that I was making for class, and he had to cut me out of it. So now... Oh, what, Nancy, did you see Jimi Hendrix? Purple what? Haze. Purple Haze? Oh, I was thinking Prince Purple Do you even Rain. know that song? Yeah, oh. Purple Haze. I was going for Prince. Sweet, though. she did. Nobody told us how late it is for him. Who's up? In we only had one person say they're in South Florida. No South one else. Florida, shared. Nobody else. <laughs> so I'm going to cut my front on the fold. Oh, I didn't mark my notches. Vegas. Mark your notches, you guys. I didn't mark my notches. But I think I can make this happen. California, it's not late. It's not late. <laughs> North Carolina. So, don't watch me waste fabric, you guys. I'm going to do a better job. Of this. Australia. Australia. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Depends how you look at the question. It's later. So, now I'm going to cut out my front mesh. England. One in the morning. One. Oh, my gosh. Bless your heart. We'll have some 3 o'clock starts again, so it won't be so awful. New Jersey, Georgia, New York City. Georgia, Georgia. I mean, like, in the country or <laughs> yes, the state? The, <laughs> I mean, the state. The state. <laughs> okay. Nebraska. Oh, it's Amy. Amy, hi. <laughs> hi. We were just there. Okay, so let's surge this together. Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, <laughs> Georgia. Georgia, 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 Georgia. So now I've got my front and my little meshy bit. And so you can see that my mesh is smaller, and I'm going to stretch it to match both my front and back. So back to this serger. And then we'll put some elastic in this sucker. Oh. And, and we'll talk a little bit about binding. Um, so I'm actually going to start with my back. And I am going to put together my center back seam. And I like to leave a center back seam in the costume because otherwise there's nothing to adjust. Or there's nothing for the person who has to come after you to adjust, you know, in 10 years when they're still wearing the same thing. What color of threads do you use? You have two colors and one is sheer. Um, you, you usually use whatever the paler thread is, um, but you can also, so the edge where the mesh is going to go in, you can, you can zigzag or cover stitch the surging down so it won't show on the outside. That makes sense. And if your stitch is good, your thread really shouldn't show at all. And then this is fun to see, too. In the back of this pattern, you see there's this little bubble. That's actually giving some room for her butt to fill up instead of it laying totally flat. So if you see that bubble back there, it's an all right thing. I am, while my mesh is folded in half, going to give myself the smallest little clip so I can make sure that my center backs match. So. Oh. Actually, I need my back pattern. Did you see my back mesh? Yes. So here is my back mesh. Oh, you know what? I need all of them. You guys will see why in just a second. Somebody else probably figured it out. Um, I need to figure out where my mesh stops. Where does my mesh stop? Oh, no, I have a spot. I thought I didn't mark where my mesh... Oh, yeah, because my mesh is going to continue up. So I don't really have to mark... Yeah, I have to mark something. Who do I have to mark? I need to mark where... I need to mark where the mesh leaves the lycra. It'll make sense in a second. So I've got my center back. 
I need to know where this point is, right? Aha. Because I don't want to stretch all of this into there. I just need to know where the mesh ends. So I'm going to give myself the tiniest little clip there, too. And then I'm going to refold it in half. It's good to mark notches, you guys. And I said, oh, I can do it. I don't have to mark it. Now here I am going back and marking it. Just a tiniest little clip so I know what I'm lining up. Now I feel better. So now I'm going to surge the mesh in. And actually, for some reason, my gut is telling me to put the mesh underneath. I don't know why. I'm going to do it. Either the seam is going to naturally lay the way I want, or it's going to lay the other way. We'll find out. So yeah, so right, your serger, oh, I put it in the wrong spot. See, you guys, I can't talk and so. Um, it's fun to play with. Take two colors of fabric, serge them, and then lay them down and see if the seam wants to lie down in a certain direction. That maybe makes sense. That makes sense. Because right? mm -hmm. then if you're trying to have the seams lay a certain way without having to stitch them down, you can figure out which way they will lay. something tricky to do. Oh, this isn't tricky. I just have, you know, have to focus. So now, once I get this anchored in there, uh, like about an inch, now I, I know where my center of my mesh is and where the center of my lycra is. So now I've actually got to stretch the lycra until it fits on the mesh. So I'm actually stretching this out because my mesh is on purpose smaller. And it'll look like it's kind of got the lycra gathered in, which is totally fine. So now I'm going to find where my other end is. And I, I, for me, I personally have more success without a ton of pins, because I like to rely on what's going on right under the stitching foot you know, then, then what I've guessed is going on, you know, when you pin, you're kind of guessing sometimes. And you don't want to surge over pins, so. So I've been stretching my Lycra so that it fits in there. Watch, there'll be a big hole. Hey, not bad. So now you can see that the Lycra is actually smaller, but when it's on their body, it's going to fit better. And you know how we were talking about figuring out which way the, you can see which way the, stir, the surging wants to lay. Actually, yeah, the surging wants to lay up. So you could also play with putting your fabric the other way and see, see what happens. But I'm going to zigzag this down so it's going to stay. So the back is done. And the neck on this is big enough that it will... Uh, fit onto her body. That's the other thing you have to kind of keep in mind is like, did you make a hole so small that they can't get into it? Any questions? Any questions? Someone said, wait, the mesh is smaller or the spandex the is smaller? The mesh is smaller because the mesh is stretchier than the spandex. So we made the mesh smaller so so that it has to, because it's it's looser. The mesh is looser. So we made it smaller that's to kind of, said. that's not what I said. <laughs> oh, I and also, I love your surgery. Oh, right? This is an old surgery. But it's good. We like jukies. Mm -hmm. And pay the extra money for the silent motor. Everyone will be thrilled to get. So now I'm stretching my mesh to match my lycra. And now, while I've got my um, front and back separate, I said earlier we were just going to stitch this seam down. So we're going to just stitch, we want to stitch the serging down so it doesn't stick up weird. And you can use a cover stitch machine if you have a cover stitch machine. Uh, ours is too, too much of a hassle to pull out for class. It can't come closer than that. Yeah. You, so, <laughs> um, so what I'm doing here is I'm using my hand underneath to get my uh, surging laying in a direction I want. And I'm using a zigzag. 
And I'm just, I don't have matching thread, but this is just class. You can see it's it. It's a seam. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is get my seam laying down. And I actually like to stretch stuff, even if I'm using a zigzag stitch or a stretch stitch, because they're going to be less likely to pop stitches. It's better that when it's not on the person, it looks maybe a little bit overstretched in the seam than it is to look beautiful, and then they put it on and all the stitches pop. So I'm actually stretching this as I go. You could actually make a whole leotard with a straight stitch as long as you stretch the fabric when you're sewing. Do you ever use a twin needle or a stretch stitch? Twin instead? needle is great. Um, uh, at the stretch stitches I find are a pain because if you have to adjust something, let me, I, guys, I can show you guys a little bit of what a stretch stitch looks like. Um, there's also, I'm going to just do it around my leg. There's all sorts of stretch stitches, and what this one is doing is it's going a zigzag, a zigzag, forward, forward, backward, backward, a zigzag, a zigzag, forward, forward, backward, backward. One, look how slow it moves compared to a zigzag. And two, if you have to adjust something, this is an absolute nightmare to take out. Oh, it doesn't show no, one. But um, there, stretch stitches are good if you don't think you're going to alter anything. But if uh, the other thing with leotards, and if they're going for a company or something, um, if you sewed on elastic with a stretch stitch, uh, in a couple years, somebody's going to have to pick out the stretch stitch and re-sew the elastic on. Someone asks, when they stretch it, it gets wavy? Yeah, that's all right. So you can see mine is wavy. Um, it's better that the stitch, like, look, I can't pop it. Like, I'm pulling as hard as I can and I can't pop it. It's better for it to be a little bit wavy here, then when it goes on the body, it should lay totally flat. If when it goes on the body, it doesn't lay flat, you're, you're stretching a little too much, but a little bit of stretch is good. Um, it, and if it's wavy here, uh, it's less likely to pop. Like I always go for longevity over, you know, trying to, I don't know, you know what I mean. How long and how wide is the zigzag you use? On my Bernina, I'm using like a four and a four. But you can mess with that too. Like if you want a less wide zigzag and if you want a narrower zigzag, you might um, decide that you need to shorten your stitch length. So the shorter the stitch length is, the narrower your zigzag can be. Do you stretch using the cover stitch? No, because the cover stitch machine is so amazingly stretchy that you don't have to stretch anything. And if someone wanted to make a keyhole for the back, how would they go about that? Um, so just how, how we took a little bit of extra out for the neck. Remember when we folded the neck in? To make a keyhole lay nice and flat, you'll also want to take a little bit more out of the keyhole opening. And then you can just bind it with binding or finish it with elastic like we're going to show you on the legs on this one. Wow. Um, so twin needle is great, zigzag is great. You could do it with a straight stitch if you didn't want it to show. But now we've just anchored this uh, seam allowance down so that when she's wearing it, it doesn't pop up because that's a big pet peeve I have when you can see the seam elements behind the mesh. It looks gross and cheap. I'm gross and cheap, but not this No, right. you're not. No? Okay, so now we're going to put our sides together. And I made the mesh in the back um, come down into the side seam. So you'll see that here in just a second. So I'm actually hooking mesh to lycra. I'm going to get it anchored in. I'm going to stitch about a half an inch or an inch. Then I'm going to figure out what I'm matching together. Kind of find the middle. And even here, I'm stretching it just a little bit to make it just extra stretchy. But if your surging stitches are popping, it probably means that either you need a monkey with your tension some and shorten your stitch length. And we, we've got notes from people that say that they're home serger. You can't adjust the stitch length, some older models. There's probably a funky-looking screw 
or button on the inside where indeed you can. And that's one of those things you can ask your machine repair guy. You can just say, hey, I want to shorten my length. But there's no obvious place to do it, but there, there's probably somewhere inside that you can adjust yourself. And if you're making a lot of leotards or using one type of fabric often, it's good to send the fabric with your machine so they can actually test it out on what you're using. So this is why we stitched this, this surging down before we put the sides together so that we're able to swallow up our, the end of our stitch into the sides. Make it look more like it's from a store. That's always the goal, right? Less homemade. So now I'm going to put my shoulders of my mesh together. So right, messing with this pattern the way we did this, you could tape your shoulders together, make the front on the fold, and then have a seam in the back of the mesh and no seam in the shoulders. So, so you can do all sorts of things. Um, really, the sky's the limit. With these base patterns, you should be able to make any leotard you've ever seen or drawn. I'm going to call this one Tiffany. Tiffany Lavender. She's seen tough times, but she's still, she's still optimistic, this little child. I'm going to put the crotch together, then we're going to look at it, then we're going to do a little bit of binding. Yeah, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So everybody be thinking about... <laughs> Some of our old ladies need an intermission. They do, I know, <laughs> right? Next time, adult diapers, and then we're off. Uh, will all be set. No crotch lining question? Um, I don't, if the, uh, I'm used to companies where the girls have to wear a thong underneath so we don't line the crotch. But you're welcome to add cotton into, cotton lycra into the crotch if you want. The trick with crotch lining is it's kind of like defeats the purpose sometimes. You're trying to make something more modest but then you're Making it thicker and hotter. You clean it. Yeah. But these can go in the wash. Pretty much any leotard should be able to go in the wash. And tell them to wear a thong. Um, but what's nice if you if you wanted crotch lining and stuff, I would line the whole front. And there's another great product out there. Uh, I know it is Halenka, but some people know it as something else. It's a really, really stretchy nude lycra-like material that has cotton blended into it that you can get in different shades of nude, white, and black. So Halenka, I don't know how you spell it, H-E-L-Halenka. <laughs> um, but that's good. So instead of like adding a lining to just the crotch, I would line the whole front because I've seen where people put crotch lining in and there's just, they, they like make this kind of odd loop or a curve or something trying to disguise it, but instead it just makes you like look right at it. Um, there. Okay, so we're going to do a couple different bindings on the legs here in a second. I'll go get some quarter-inch elastic. We got some, I don't know if we have any. Ooh la la. So, this is looking pretty good. I'm impressed. Um, let's get it straight on here, though. She's a little bit wrong. Um, so, making the mesh a little bit smaller is really making this lay super nice and flat across the front. Same thing in the back, making a little bit a little bit narrower. Uh, it's really laying into her back quite nicely. So that's good. Um, do we crappy, have quarter not, inch elastic? I mean, we only have crappy quarter inch elastic. <laughs> Um, so what you could do here is, I'm going to lose my turban, um, what you can do here is, uh, sometimes we'll use eighth inch elastic, and, um, I do the same thing, where I figure I am oh, uh, we had an earthquake, um, I figure out a ratio, so you could actually measure the neck and make, figure out a ratio to make your elastic smaller rather than just guessing. And once you find a ratio you like, it doesn't matter whether your neck is really, really high or super low in the back, the same ratio will work from costume to costume and girl to girl. Um, 
With mesh, it doesn't unravel and sometimes will just leave the cut edge as the finish edge. So, so if I was completing this leotard, I might add a quarter just where my lycra bit is and put just the tiniest piece of unstretched elastic uh, here in the side or even stretch it just a hair and finish off the edge of the lycra and then leave the mesh raw, just leave the mesh a cut edge. You can also use the serger and bag the edge of the mesh. So, so remember earlier too when we split the neck and narrowed it, that's making it really tight at the neck and it's helping, it's acting kind of like elastic already by having narrowed uh, this, this edge. Um, but you can also bind it, which we'll show in a second, and you can also finish it with elastic. This you might, uh, in the mesh, you have more success with nude elastic instead of white or trying to match the color because when you put the nude elastic in, it disappears a little bit better. So you would just stitch your elastic behind it with a zigzag or cover stitch, then fold it and stitch it again, and it looks pretty nice. Um, that's hard to see, but I'll bind the legs. So, so you can use the same elastic and binding principle in the neck and the arms, but I'm going to show it to you in the legs. And I have some questions about the ratio of the elastic for... Yeah, so, so the way you figure that out, I'm, I like to do it about like 82 or 85 percent. So, so we're going to do a leg together. But again, the ratio is like the principle and it's it's up to you to make one or two leg holes tighten and loosen the elastic and then I need a signature tighten and loosen the elastic and then figure out your ratio <laughs> and we have some people asking also could you use clear elastic you know what the clear elastic isn't good if it's going to be worn more than a couple times because when it gets sewn it perforates and it rips apart um, for nude elastic, you can take white and you mix, what is it, sunshine orange and purple and navy. You can make your own nude elastic. Um, the clear stuff I've used for a couple shows, but I sometimes find too that it reflects more light and it actually is more noticeable um, than dyeing the elastic. Or it's great if it's for a show to just have the girls use their pancake makeup. Uh, and pancake it. So I'm measuring my leg hole and unstretched it's 24 inches and I'm going to make my elastic about 80% of that. So I'm going to put my dial on 80% so I'm reducing my 24 inches to 19. So I'm going to measure out 19 inches of elastic. So right, everybody was should have been kind of on board with that little bit. Kind of. We have a couple of people asking what it means to bag something. Bag means when you, the edge when you take two pieces of fabric and sew them together and turn it inside out. That's bagging. So like when you make a pillow uh, and you sew four sides and leave a little hole and you turn it inside out, you've bagged the pillow. And there are some people asking about dyeing elastic. I just use RIT dye, and a good base to start with is um, a combination of yellow and purple because they're opposite on the color wheel, and they make a nice neutral tan. And from there, you can adjust adding green or red to add a cool tone or warm tone, depending on their skin color. Um, but it's just elastic and RIT dye. You could also start with just tan writ, but it's not very natural looking. You'd have to add some other colors into it and just play around until it's the right color you want. Someone else said when they make cutouts, their elastic sticks up straight. What are they doing wrong? You need to stretch it a little bit more probably. Okay, so I overlapped my elastic and stitched the overlap together. And then I'm putting my overlap not by my seam because you don't want stuff to be super thick. So I overlapped my elastic, made a tube, and I offset the overlap from the seam. Then what I'm going to do is pin like the first half of my front without stretching it so that we're avoiding yanking the crotch up too high in the front. 
So I'm pinning a little bit of my front flap. This is good info too on a tutu panty. If you're having trouble keeping your tutu panty butts down, stitch the side seam of the elastic into the side of your panty. Then you can pull the front and back independently and, and have the butt cup in rather than the front. Okay, so now that I have my front bit flat, all I did was uh, I just stretched the elastic and my, and my garment to even out to get the same amount of extra life around the front and back. So I've divided it, and I can, you can continue to, buy, to divide this, but I'm going to just stretch it while I sew. And I'm going to actually do this one, this first stitch, with a straight stitch because I'm going to really stretch it. And I don't want the elastic so sewn in there that if I have to take it out, it's going to take forever to take it out. Um, some people surge in the elastic, and I find what happens then is the elastic, there's so much thread in the surging that the elastic can't shrink back, and you actually end up with a leg hole that's bigger uh, when you surge in the elastic. So I like to just straight stitch it in or zigzag it. I'm going to get my my lump of my overlap laid down there. This isn't representative of my best sewing. Okay, so I'm going to just continue to stretch my elastic. Matching the edge pretty close. If you don't get right on the edge, nobody's going to work. So I'm really stretching it because I'm going to just leave the straight stitch in there. But the reason I'm straight stitching is it's nicer if you have to adjust something that you're not picking out two rows of zigzags, right? Uh, I should have got my surging out of the way, but this is just a sample. Are you sewing down the center of the line? Yeah, I am. I am, I am, I am. And my straight stitch is all loopy and weird underneath because I've stretched it so hard. Like, I really stretched this out. So I have kind of a loopy straight stitch, and the tension on my machine isn't very great right now, but that's all right. Now we're going to do a zigzag that's like a three and a half and a three and a half, which is kind of the middle range of my machine's range. Trim all your threads, make everything look really, really nice. And then so now we've got this flat bit in the front. And the second stitch I like to actually do from the side that you see instead of the side that you don't see. Because if something is going crooked and weird, it's easier to fix it. it. Make the front look better. Make the outside look better than the inside, right? And we we use sometimes microtex needles or just universal needles. I other than knitwear, you know, if something is knit and it unravels. That's about the only time I use a ballpoint needle. But every, every machine acts different, too, with ballpoint needles. So you just have to kind of see what works on your machine. But I was just imagining somebody was thinking about that. that was I pretend that everybody's behind me going, uh -huh. So now here's the, now I'm at the butt where it's really, it's really stretched. The arms really stretched. So I've got to stretch it back out. And then we'll look at binding here too. Where right is there. the zigzag on that? I can't get close. It's <laughs> just wherever it looks the most appealing to you. Um, I just kind of go again right in the middle of the elastic. But all this stuff is just kind of ideas. And then you take it and, and make it look really nice. So there, I, it probably won't show because I have light on light but I've got an elastic in there. Well, I'm going to show you the binding idea, um, which is similar to, to the elastic. So some people like to put in an elastic and then wrap a color over it. They'll, they'll cut a strip of lycra. So I've already put my elastic in. Then some people will lay a color of lycra to it and fold it over and stitch it in the ditch. That means stitch right along the edge so that you get a nice colorful edge. 
The other thing you can do for binding is just cut cut a rectangle. So right, so your serger is about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So you need a half an inch to deal with the serger, and then however much you want to show, you double it. So if I went three eighths inch binding, I need three eighths for the top, three eighths for the underside, and then a quarter and a quarter for my seam allowance. And the binding, you can do the same way that you did the elastic. And I like to use it in place of the elastic. Um, so I would make a loop of, of, I would make a rectangle and sew it into a loop that is, it's, this is about as stretchy as the elastic is. So you could do the same 80 to 82-ish percent. Um, then you take the cut ends of your your binding, right? You just have two flat edges. I'll sew just a smidge of this on. Then you're going to, the binding if you want, you can serge on, but you can straight stitch it on too. That's why this is intro class. You can just take these ideas and mess with them all. So I'll just slap this on. So we don't have time to bind the whole leg because we're going to take some more questions. But the idea is that the binding is, again, smaller than the whole of the leg. So I'm actually going to stretch my binding a little bit. And you would, you would put this on similar to the elastic. You'd make the front flat and then even out the rest. So, and make a tube, just like you did with the elastic. Can you remove a bit from the leg hole if you're using a fabric binding? No, you mean make the leg hole smaller? I leave it the same. Um, so, but you can see here too that my fabric binding is, is making my Leo bunch up, which is good. You want the binding to be tighter. Then if you want, you can go back again. I'll do this with the straights. Now I'll do this even. Then I'm going to go back in and make my surged edge. Oh, I bet I got a parking ticket. I forgot to pay oh. my meter. That's all right. Uh, now I'm laying my surged edge down. And this looks really nice with the twin needle or a cover stitch. Uh, but a zigzag works just fine. Then uh, what some folks uh, like about the binding is you've got, you have a nice contrast in color. Um, and you have a hollow tube, so should you find that you actually need to tighten it up, you can just pick out a little bit and slide in an elastic into your binding and tighten it up. But if your binding is, is tight enough, you, you can do it without the elastic, but you can also add elastic to it. Um, the other thing with binding is if you think about curves like with the binding and the elastic, so even though we kind of figured out a percent of reduction that we like, if you have a back that's got a really tight U into it, wherever your tighter parts are, you want to stretch it a little bit more. Man, my hair is terrible. Can you show the back of the binding? Yeah, let's look at the back. So here's the front. There's the front. Look, that looks so <laughs> nice. And then here's the back. So it's just two rows of zigzag. If you want, you can surge your first step of the binding in and then use a zigzag to make, it lie, to make it lie flat. But as long as your zigzag is set right, you can really stretch it. And um, uh, it's just the surging is hard to take out if you have to adjust it. So if you're binding on the serger, it would be 3 8 plus 3 8 plus half plus half? Uh, 3 8 so to make, a, to make 3 8 inch binding, you need 3 eighths and 3 eighths, so the top of your binding and the bottom of your binding, and then you only add a half because the serger is using a quarter and a quarter. So if I was making half inch binding, I would take a half plus a half plus a quarter plus a quarter. So half inch binding, you need an inch and a half wide strip. Type in any questions you guys have yeah. about the class. We'll do about 10 minutes of questions, and then, and then that's about it for this round. But... So you can use the same binding ideas on the neck and the armholes also. Ooh, look how good the one with the... So she has a little pillow still in her butt because she doesn't have a butt. Um, but there's with our elastic side. She doesn't have a butt, poor thing. <laughs> she is pretty flat. She's pretty flat. 
um, but the ideas are there. And if, if you've got a girl that can stand in the leotard, make whatever version of the front and back you want, whether you have seams or side front seams or center back seam, and just draw several styles right on her in different colors, and then you can make all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Question time. Will we eventually be able to see a video? We are recording this one. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, we're still sorting that out. <laughs> create a process. Trying. Yeah. But yes, that is definitely in the plan. Um, any pattern adjustment needed for fuller bottoms, like more volume toward the top of the backside or protruding area? Um, so if they've got a really curvy butt, you can just lengthen the back. So if I take my back, I can kind of show you real quick. So if I was making this one, and I had a girl with a bootay, here, show this stuff. If she has a butt butt, like if she needs darts in her jeans to make her jeans fit, you can put a cut like this. So I'm going to cut from the side across the full part of her butt, and then I'm going to open like, you know, just a, like a half an inch or an inch. So I have, can you guys see what I did? I think so. If I put it here. So this is, this is my butt. And if I cut across it and open the center back, that gives her more curve over her butt. Or if you think about when you lay nice pants on the table, the back of the pants should be higher. And the bigger your butt is, the higher the back of your pants is. So we have just made the back of our pants higher because this is the center back seam. Would you do the same adjustment if the person has a sway back? If they have a sway back, you probably could do the reverse and tighten it tighten it down here a little bit so that it tucks into their back a little bit more or make the dart a little bit bigger. You know, take a smidge more out of the side. Um, are there any concerns on changing the design, like if the back dips really far down, even with the mesh? No, it's kind of just those same principles. Like if you make the neck smaller, you know, if, you, if I was dipping my back really far down, I would whatever I had in paper here, I would reduce the neck edge again a little bit just to keep it tight into their body. When you say draw it on, then what do you do? Do you take it off and transfer yeah. it to a cut pattern? Yeah, you could just draw, you could draw like 10 styles on this girl and just baste it together with a straight stitch stretching the lycra. Then you lay it down and you just use a tracing wheel. Oh, what? Then you use a tracing wheel. What? Look at the camera. I know. I look Somebody at myself. Then you, then you use a <laughs> tracing wheel uh, and mark it all on your paper. So you can make different cuts, then, then take it apart, lay it flat, and draw your different style lines. That's what we do. Yep. Any more questions? You can also message us any questions on our Facebook page or send an email to sewinstyle at hotmail.com. And if anybody didn't get their patterns to work with the Adobe Reader with a 3-inch box, uh, send a message tonight oh, yeah. anywhere and we'll, we'll resend those tomorrow. Um, how would you add a neck? Oh, like a turtleneck? Okay. Get, um, get a flat patterning book. The costume technicians handbook. Where is We're one? For one. We have like three. Um, That's what's called the costume technicians handbook. Yeah, and it's a really good flat patterning book. You know for there. Um, get the so if you if you start dabbling in flat patterning, you can learn how we made this exact thing, the base that we're starting from. And then there, you can see in there a collar, a sleeve, different skirts. Then you can use the same idea where we shrunk 88% uh, around and 92% up and down um, to make a collar or other items to go with this. And tomorrow we're going to deal with sleeves and skirts. Um, but you could also just cut the neck up higher and make a curved band and just, you know, you can also drape with, with lycra, if you make something that you know fits, then just come in with some pins, scissors, and tape and mess with it on a girl until it fits. How would you change it to make it a halter? 
It's, it's a halter top. with straps. It's oh. like the two coming to the top yeah. and the back. Yeah, just draw wherever you want the the shape of the neck to be, and then just. But a halter would kind of gather. Would, would gather up. Just it mess depends. with it. Look yeah. at lay it. Look. <laughs> just um, play with it. Just play with it. But like, that if I knew drink. I wanted a strap that come up to my neck and the back, right? If this went up to my back, I know that my I can already use use the paper to figure out how long does my strap need to be and if I want the strap to go from here over to the neck you just draw the same thing on your paper in fact you can take the little mini one and copy 30 of them and sit at your couch at home practice taking away darts and moving seams adding mesh and changing things then blow up blow it up from little when you think you've got something fun all right, there's time for two more questions. I just look at myself. And <laughs> look I'm, at the camera. I know. It's good. My complexion is just <laughs> garbage this week. He's been stressed. We've been working 20-some hours a day on Beauty and the Beast. But it's done now. That's it? It looks like it. Okay, we're going to say good night. I hope you had fun, and we'll see some people tomorrow. Yeah. You can still sign up if you are interested in learning more about Leo's. What are you going to cover tomorrow? Tomorrow we're going to make, uh, we have a system to make sleeves that we'll have in the, we'll email it early in the day, but it'll also be in the handout section. And it's on eight and a half by 11 pages um, <laughs> so that you can draft a sleeve for man, woman, child, baby, elephant. And then we're going to talk about how you take this, and add a gourd skirt to it. So where you have panels that come all the way up and then go into a flared skirt. And we'll talk about um, sweep and swing, which are the words you use to, to make fullness in a skirt. Um, will you cover narrow straps tomorrow? Just narrow strap it's covered. <laughs> Cut a narrow strap. <laughs> awesome. A narrow strap is a fat strap. Spaghetti. It's narrow. It's spaghetti. It's spaghetti. <laughs> but you could you can use the same. Um, so you can you can to make to just to make strapping an easy thing is to just wrap, um, cut lycra that's three widths of whatever width elastic you want to use in your strap, zigzag or straight stitch one side of it, stretch it a little bit, then fold it over the strap twice and zigzag down the middle so that this, the raw seam is hidden. And then you can just work that into your, your neck. Or you can even bind your neck. So if, I, if this was a skinny strap, you could figure out uh, the width of binding for your neck, and then it just leaves the lycra and becomes the strap. And another good thing is to just look at leotards and see what they did when they made them. Um, you know, in the store, in the factory. But I don't do straps, straps much anymore. Lots of times we'll just use nude mesh, or there's a product called souffle, spelled like souffle, which you can find in different places. Because um, I think you have a little more control of keeping the style where you want it, and it, it doesn't cut into the girls. Like, I hate when the straps are so tight that they have a damp in their arms. Looks like that's it. All right. Thank Good you. Night. Thank you. Good night or morning. Good morning. Good night. <laughs> Go to bed. Wake up. <laughs>